Welcome back, Sergey fans, to the October 2018 3v3 Spooktacular Tournament Recap. I remain your host, Dominic, and we are into the Grand Finals. It's going to be a Sagara Catastrophe Top Cac Team Mumble Clan against Manu400 and Isaac. Also known as Team Lobster, but they don't all, they're not all Clan Lobster, so it won't show up that way in the game. But yeah, Grand Finals. Bit of a longer tournament, and some resignance going on from Team Pluck. But, hey, that is how it goes sometimes, so we're going to have... Grand final on ring well game one is gonna be nuclear winner. It is best of three, so we will have at least two games. I don't think anyone resigned this time. So yeah, let's get going. Wait. There we go. Sagaro going in for the tank factory. Another factory we haven't seen a whole lot of this tournament. Catastrophe also going for the tank factory, surprisingly enough. We already have the one. And And Airplane Plant is up there for Top Gag. Same time we have Manu with the metal extractor and sorry, that's not a factory. That's airplanes the factory. Wow, I'm. You should think I'd be more used to doing this long, but I guess this happens sometimes. Anyway, cloaking for four hundred rovers for Isaac. More rovers, which like so we saw last we saw on last map too. I'm just surprised how little we've seen of it, but more so I'm surprised how little we've seen of tanks. Because okay, yeah, Cyclops is weaker. I will grant that. That's definitely a thing that changed, which... Okay, fair enough. I can see why that would potentially make people less likely to want to go for it. But at the same time, Cyclops is still only one part of the factory. But hey, we have Tank Factory, so I'm not going to complain. And also, this is played on 1.6.9.0. The recent update to 1.6.10.0 didn't apply to this game. So, yeah. Anyway, Manu managing again to maintain air control, as they often do. I mean, that's kind of the point of that early air factory. At the same time, Topcac, not really a whole lot in the way of air control on their end. Not even trying to go for it. It's going for the commander upgrade instead, letting their teammates use the metal. Building up their own economy, which is probably the best idea. Because their opponents are going for the swifts, going for the air. I mean, hey, an ogre will help deal with that, so good thinking there. But also, just, there's no point building up cranes, because the cranes will go down to the swifts. So you might as well just make the Swifts not do anything, build up your economy, and then later on, if you can build up more Swifts than your opponent, then do so. Because I don't think Mana's going to be building up a bunch of Swifts. I think they're going to go switch over to Ravens pretty soon. Although, never mind, Top Gak actually starting to build a few Swifts. Not sure that's going to work in practice, but it could work. Oh, wow, okay. Is that a Swift? Yes, it was. That was what this one ogre does to a swift. Fires it across the map. If anyone was wondering, that's what happens. Fortunately, Kodachis can't deal with that. But that's fine. Because the Kodachis is here to deal with the ground forces. And the swift and the ogre are here to deal with the air forces. Or sorry, the ogre tell to the air forces. Or the ogre could deal with the ground forces too. Why not? Ogres can deal with everything. Ogres can deal with this giant amount of darts. They're not going for it, but they could. Except they don't, because Ravens. Actually, that's a that was a very strong assault in Manu's base. The thing is, Manu was in the center, which means they are going to be the most likely target. And they're playing air, which means they also have the hardest time defending. Isaac, however, did come in. They helped defend with that, which is exactly what they should do. And 400 going in for a bit of a flank push. Like, getting around behind some of Segaro's forces. Getting ready to push in themselves. So, I could see that working out anyway. Like, this is still a pretty okay position for Top Cac to, Sorry, for a 400 to be in. Top Cac, on the other hand... Wow, that's... Oh, I see. That's why. Uh, <laughs> RAR, Commander. Yep. Going for them RAR-style commanders. What is Top Cac going for? Let's go for that. Beam laser, disruptor bomb, and armor. Okay, so mostly focusing on getting just the standard upgrade... Up, like, health from the upgrades more than anything. Try not to spend as much metal on the upgrades themselves, like having fewer parts added to their commander. That's a typical thing to do. A lot of times people will do that just to make it a bit easier. Like, just to get that, because the HP bonus is quite nice. And I don't think there's a limit to how many levels a commander can have. So you almost might as well, especially early on. Manu, however, getting a lot of scouting in here. Not a lot of anti-air either to help deal with that. So, right, right, sheesh. Right now, 400 with all these Ronin should be able to wipe out this entire front line. Now, Kodachi's going to be able to do nothing. And 
the Swifts just providing the extra scouting. Actually, maybe not. They could actually be able to get some damage in there. Gets rid of one of the Ronin. Might be able to get rid of another one, too. Nope. No, there we go. It's gone. And actually, that first Ronin managed to put itself out. So, even then, no. The Kodachi doesn't accomplish anything. Ogre might try something, but I don't know. Hmm. At the same time, though, Isaac coming in on the north side of the map. Dealing potentially quite a bit of damage. It's not, not really clear. And the fences are coming in to prepare, but it looks like, as it is, just setting up more Gauss turrets. Setting up more turrets in general on the ramp, just to make it a little bit harder for the fencers to get in here. But at this point, I consider the fences a contain. I don't think they're going to be an assault force. Just contain it so that Isaac can take more of the metal extractors and Manu as well. That should work fine. Same with 400. They should have no problem dealing with this stuff. Actually, at this point, 400... Oof. 400 men who cooperated to help get rid of Sagaro and Catastrophe's forces. It looks like right now, really, the advantage is Eastern Team. They got 20 metal per second on their opponents. Attrition's about even, but Army's not. And oh, and the fences are going for an assault force. Getting rid of the Gauss before it's even able to get built up. I think the Stinger's going to stop them, but I'm not sure what they know. Now they know enough now. They have the radar coverage, so they knew what was up there. I mean, the Stinger, I think, will be able to defend itself against the Fencers. Yeah, it will. It'll hit. Yeah, that's... Or no, it won't. It stops most of them, though. But now enough of them still get in. Everything else is still going to eventually go down here. So this northern ramp is really not defended. It's just slowing down the Fencers, but that's not enough. At the same time, 400 has basically taken... Well, it split the south in half with Topgag. But 400 has taken a little bit more, has a bit more strong defensive position... And can probably just walk these Ronin in whenever they... No, they can just walk these Ronin in whenever they like, honestly. They could do it right now. In fact, they should, because... Because the commander is getting closer and closer to this base. Like, this set of defenses is not safe against Ronin. But the commander kind of is. Kind of. I mean, being laser disruptor bomb, they don't have any range boosts, so it's probably not. But it kind of is. And now the north ramp has been completely wiped out. So there's nothing stopping these fencers from just walking into Catastrophe's base. They can just go right in and wipe out everything, and that's going to be it. That'll be over. I don't... Yeah, I think this is going to be pretty much game with this pusher from Isaac. I mean, what's going on for counter push right now? Well, there's a Minotaur coming up here, but it's not going to be up in time. And over in the south, a few more Swiss being built up, but not much else. And a Minotaur being built over by Sagaro as well. So that's something, but the Eastern team, wow, sheesh, 115 metal, there's static economy because they have two-thirds of the map. Although a couple mentors are in place, and actually the fencers aren't going to be able to deal with them too much. The welder will go down in the process, but the fencers either have to retreat or go for a suicide mission and try to get rid of everything they can over inside the space, maybe get rid of the caretakers and metal extractors and such, but the mentors are going to stop them. Like, sooner or later, the mentors are going to win this fight, but it almost doesn't matter. It's... I'm not really sure how much of an effect it's going to have. I mean, it slows it down, sure. But... So what? Like, there's still fencers coming in on the south side of the map. Still East Team with a 40 metal per second advantage, just building up a bunch of its economy. Just getting as... Getting as much overdrive as it can, really. Just securing what it can. Actually, I'm kind of curious why all the fences are in there. We are seeing Isaac go for a Kolgibot factory, so on top of that, there could be... Possibly a... Glaive push? Possibly. Oh, no. It's... No, nice from 400. I don't know if Glaive push would be what I'd go for, but I can see that. Or maybe a Reaver push, just to have that to fight the Minotaurs with. I think Glaive would work better in that respect, but either way. The point is, they have Skirms cover. So, Rot would make sense as defensing against Skirms, and Raider would make sense to get rid of these Minotaurs. Or just bomb them out. That works, too. Man is right there, on the bombs. Got that all sorted. So, really... Oh, but the Etten, never mind. No, it's not sorted. The Etten's there, but it may not be enough anyway, just because of the fact that... Actually, no, maybe enough. Oh, no, this is enough. This is a Strider... This is... We got five Minotaurs, I think? Ah, seven Minotaurs. No, this is actually a possible turnaround point. All those Scorchers are up, and no, it's Ronin. That was the option. Glaive Ronin. That was half right. And yeah, these Minotaurs are not long for this world, I'm afraid. 
I don't know, I say that, but the ogre... No, the ogre's there. Never mind. The minotaurs are actually very long for this world. They're good. The ogre's got them protected. They can wipe out the Stardust, no problem. Probably wipe out Isaac's commander, no problem. One of them does go down. But, just, Isaac's commander's gonna go down in response. As is pretty much Isaac's entire northern side on their base. This assault force is doing a pretty fine job, but at the same time... It, Isaac doesn't even care. They're going around the back. They're just stopping any additional Minotaurs from reinforcing it while the bombs drop and get rid of the Minotaurs that have been built up. That being said, though, the Minotaurs have grouped up between Zagaro and Catastrophe. The Minotaurs are together. So Isaac, while they are stopping reinforcements from Catastrophe, are not stopping them from Zagaro, and Zagaro's army, that's the one that's... That's the real threat right now. 400's commander are also going to go down quite quickly. And that could break this. I mean, Eastern team, they're still very strong economically, and even with this this setback, it's probably not going to be much, as the Ravens are able to come in and start dealing with Minotaurs. It's something, but it's only helpful. It's not going to destroy the entire force that's been built up by the Eastern team. It's not going to destroy their economy quickly. And at the same time, there's 400 going in the south side of the map, wiping out everything Topcac has built, and just poised to destroy their entire base. And Mando at the same time getting up a crow just in case. It only will take them a minute. I mean, they have 130 metal. They might as well. But, yeah, with that crow... If, I mean, if the game's not over before that crow gets built, the game is going to be over once the crow gets spotted. Well, that being said, Thunderbird coming in here being fairly effective, forcing 400 to retreat, buying Topcac a bit of time. But I'm not sure what buying that time is going to accomplish. There's only about 10 seconds left on this. And, I don't know, 5 seconds left on this. In the time it takes for these forces to walk back into Top Cag's base, the disarm will have worn off. At the same time, there's Isaac wiping out basically everything that's been built up by Catastrophe with no defenses available. Like I said, they stopped the reinforcements for all the Minotaurs. So all, the only Minotaurs left are Segaros. And even then, Segaro can only do so much with them. And there, at the same time, 400 wiping out everything Segaros built from behind. And that's just leading to resign. Don't even need to see the Crow. Crow doesn't even need to complete, and that's going to be a resign. So yeah, Eastern team just having the metal advantage from the beginning. Army advantage from most of the game. I mean, that was just a very clear, decisive win. Really, ultimately, it just came down to the fact that the Eastern team just grabbed it. Like, Dynfrin, especially taking the south side of the map, was very decisive. Otherwise, it was reasonably evenly split. But, yeah, Dynfrin took the south side of the map, made it hard for Top Cac to do anything with it. And that led to, like, it was, you know, the early attack, that early Ogre Kodachi attack that came into Manu. But it didn't matter because Dynaform was able to essentially go along this path from the base they'd set up and then secure the center, protecting Manu from any further attacks. And then that, of course, led to all this economy being taken. So that was, that was remarkably effective. Anyway, that was only game one, though. We're going to have, a, we're going to have at least one more game. That is in Kulta. Same teams, but in Kulta, the dry version, I guess. Anyway, stay tuned for... Wait, no, I'm saying stay tuned for that. We're gonna just get to it right now. Just go back to the bracket screen as I switch over the maps because Inculta is gonna take a little while to get the replay going. Yeah, so that was... That was an interesting game. I do kind of wish we'd seen a bit more stuff there. Oh, like, then we need hallucinations in zero case so we can have resigns to fake crows. Oh, man, that would be so cruel. I mean, that would be interesting. Especially considering if they had, like, depending on how much health they had or whatever. But, that would be cruel. Yeah. Although, of course, I guess, I'm guessing you're talking about StarCraft Starcraft 1 rules for Resign, not StarCraft 2 rules. Sorry, not Resign. Blah. StarCraft 1 rules for Hallucinations. Sorry, StarCraft 2 rules for Hallucinations, not StarCraft 1. Sorry, the two are different, because StarCraft 1, Hallucinations are done by having a unit in play, and then you have the High Templar cast Hallucination, and then you get duplicates of that unit that are hallucinatory. I think they get killed very quickly, and dispels just destroy them immediately, and they can't deal damage. StarCraft 2, High Templar... No, not High Templars, it's centuries, I believe, have a hallucination menu that allows you to just choose from any unit in the game, or at least any Protoss unit, and then put them out there as a hallucinatory unit, which your opponent doesn't know whether or not you actually have the tech for. Which is stronger, but in Zero K, it might be broken, if that existed. Anyway, back to the game itself, though. We have... 
we have the match. It is going to be, like I said, Inculta with Sagara Catastrophe and Top Cag. Again, very close together because they tend to like to be. Although this map, I think I think you have to be in this map. I think the way it's built up. Or is it? I'm not sure. I think actually you get the entire western side, but in this case, both teams went for the corners. Unless it is like that, because this... Like, Alien Desert is just the corners, and that's basically a mini version of Inculta. But I thought with Inculta, you had the sides, but it might have changed. I haven't seen Inculta... I haven't seen Inculta since they built up... Or since the... The... What's it called? The Starbox Lua API existed. Where you can actually define Starboxes per map. You don't have to go through the lobbies. Yeah, those of you who have only been playing from the Steam release on, you don't know what I'm talking about, because... The start, manual start boxes don't exist in the Steam release version of Zero K. Be glad they don't. They sucked. Anyway, and yeah, the following thing you were talking about, StarCraft 2, that's what I figured. That would be broken. I mean, that'd be broken in Zero K. Which is kind of funny, because in Zero K, you can build any... Like, in StarCraft 2, it's more a matter of deceiving your opponent as to what technology you've researched. Whereas in Zero K, you can... I mean, unless you can only... Unless you can build any factory... In 0k, you you can build any unit that you have. You just don't necessarily have the money for it. So in a sense, it'd be weaker because your opponent doesn't... Well, okay, in a sense, it'd be stronger because your opponent can't go off what you already have to know whether or not what you're building is likely real. But your opponent also won't necessarily know whether or not you could afford it. Because you could have legitimately built the thing if you could afford it. Because that's the only real limitation. I don't see that happening, though. That would just be a lot of UI effort for a gimmick unit that likely wouldn't happen. The game... Zero K doesn't have special abilities in the way that would allow for that. Anyway, back to the game, though. And back to Manu wiping out Sagero's ability to scout, or trying to. Almost getting rid of the owl. Should be able to get... Yeah, it does get to the air... The, the base. Does get back to the airplane plant. So it will be able to survive that, but still... A lot of damage. That's still a lot of scouting that's not happening, and that means... What does that mean? Well, not much radar. So, yeah, at this point, Sagaro, Catastrophe, um, Team Mumble Clan, they just have nothing. They have no idea what's going on in Team North, at the Northwest team's base, or Northwest team's army, or defenses, or anything. And the Northwest team is only slightly ahead in economy. It's not like it's a big difference between the two teams. It's just that Northwest team right now, they have... They have more knowledge of what's happening. And they've stopped Mumble Clan from knowing what's happening. And the Owl should be back online in a couple of seconds, but even then. Manu still has their Swifts. They're still waiting just to see what they can use them on. And also 400 coming in here with the daggers just to try to find something. Try to fish for some weak points. Getting spotted by the Owl, but that Owl, that's that's spinning a target on its back. Once the Scorches are down, Swifts got rid of those. I can see the Owl being the next thing to go after. That being said, the daggers are actually having a bit of a hard time. Swifts are doing a good job getting rid of them. It's just still all the scouting, all the information. I mean, Catastrophe is completely scouted. Topcax almost completely scouted. I think the I think only Manu, sorry, only Sagaro has them scouted, and that's just because they have very little to scout in the first place. So yeah, Northwest team just very rapidly gaining an advantage here by territory and knowledge. It's a little bit precarious. They do have to make sure they don't get attacked too much, and Sagaro does know that these are naked expands, so that might lead to Topcat going in with these with these fences and scorches going into the southwest side of the map and just wiping it all out. I could very well see that. Especially as the southwest hasn't been built up either, but more importantly, the defenses are just now being built up for the area in front, like the center of southwest. But the far southwest, there's a good 15 metal per second there. It just hasn't been taken yet. At the same time, the far northeast, Mumble Clan kind of has control over that, but doesn't have control over the center, so it's going to be a lot harder for them to secure overall compared to what the northwest team has. At this point, though, ooh, the owl's not going to go down, and in fact, Sagaro basically has complete air control. I mean, Manu, ooh, actually nicely done, able to turn that boost around, turn actually into very strong, very strong thesis for their own ability to take air control, and does in fact manage to do that. Or at least managed to put Sagaro back into somewhat even position. But it looks like that is going to be very short-lived. 
I mean, as it is, Sekiro Catastrophe and Top Cag are still kind of ahead in terms of me or in terms of attrition. They're not too far behind in terms of metal. They're getting the Southwest expansion that they know is completely naked. So they know that there's nothing stopping them. Essentially, 400's kind of playing off of a bit of a bluff. So I don't really see any major points other than this northwest side. This set of daggers here from the northwest is the main thing 400 has and that northwest team has to take out Mumble Clan. And even then, I'm not sure how well it's going to work, just considering the fact that between the Welders and the Swifts, the daggers are taking a lot of damage, but no, the Welder's going to go down. The Welder going down is huge. That means the entire north side is not going to catastrophe. And the daggers still have time to get rid of a few more metal extractors and make it that much harder for Mumble Clan to get their economy going. On top of that, Manu just making it impossible for Segaro to get in and actually harass the daggers thanks to their own swifts. Nice job, Manu, there. And with that, 400, they're able to wipe out basically everything built up by Catastrophe over the eastern and northeast side of the map. They might be able to take out a little more, but they are wisely avoiding the ogre because that would be death. So you don't want to do that. But the daggers are going to go down. I mean, they've dealt a lot of damage. They got a lot of value. They might actually be able to escape, but I don't think... No, they're not. The Swifts do manage to pick them off at the very end. But that's fine. The damage has been dealt. Isaac has been able to expand along the back of that. And at the same time, even though some of the naked expansions have been destroyed, Manu is able to expand and get those Swifts set up to help defend. Although I don't think the Swifts are the way to go with that. Ravens, much better option. I like that. That's a, that's a good choice. That will work. Or at least that'll help. Halberds are the best option, though. So 400 is on that, and at this point, Northwest team, they have a very secure control over the Southwest. They have reasonable secure control over the Northeast. An Ogre is going to try to contest that, but I think there's enough static defenses to deal with that. Not to mention this. Well, no, the Swiss are not going to work against the Ogre. That's true. But there are still Ravens. There's still other air forces that can come in. And, well, it's just, just the Ravens. That's it. I thought there might be some Phoenixes, but nope. On the other hand, the Cloakbot Factory is just about up, so we could see Isaac coming in here with probably Ronin. Probably Ronin and Glaive again, like last time. Although, on a map this size, I almost would expect just straight Glaive. Maybe not against the Ogres, though. But Glaives are faster. They can actually run into their opponents in a reasonable amount of time. So, maybe. I don't know. They haven't built yet, so I really can't say. Like Isaac at this point just focusing on getting the caretakers up. Actually, given that this, they might just go for hard knights. Just get a dozen or so knights and march in. Nope, going for the glaives. And it, indeed, it is going to be glaive Ronin, just like last time. See, so yeah, Isaac got a bit of a pattern there. Go for, go for the glaive Ronin. It's not a bad strategy. I mean, at this point, the only issue might be raiders, and raiders aren't really being used in a map this size. We're seeing a few Kodachis here and there, but. Really, it's not something that's going to be a major threat. So, yeah, it makes sense. The defenses can deal with the Raiders well enough. And the Ronin and Glaive... And the Glaives get rid of any opponent skirmishers. The Ronin help get rid of assault forces and de static defenses and so forth, along with the fencers. They just deal more damage in the process. So, yeah, that's not a bad strategy. Mumble Clan trying to harass in at the same time, trying to get rid of some of these metal extractors and slow down Northwest's progression, but I don't see that happening. Especially as this entire south side has been wiped out, the Halberds coming in along the south... Wiping all the metal extractors clean from Top Gag's possession. Sigaro's commander going... Ooh, actually kind of clever. Going up instead of down. I mean, it's not going to... Ooh, does actually work. Oh, man. I can't believe that actually worked. Sigaro managing to just save themselves barely, making a hill and sliding down the backside, going skiing for their life. But that may not be enough, just considering that Northwest at this point has double the economy of Mumble Clan. Daggers coming along the south side of the map, same time as a lot along the north side of the map of Daggers too. And the Glaives and Swifts and basically everything. I mean, I say Raiders aren't really a major concern. It's more not really a major concern for the Northwest team. I mean, Scorchers are a possible concern, but Kodachis, they can be dealt with by fencers reasonably quickly, at least in the numbers they're coming out in. Otherwise, yeah, not much. And this, I think at this point, it's going to be probable resign. Nope! Catastrophe wants the resign, but we are not going to see it yet. I mean, Mumble Clan is way behind. But there is still a potential opportunity for destroying these naked expansions. That's the one thing. And the thing is, these expansions will not be naked forever. In fact, the Stardust coming up here is going to be the securing point for this entire southwest side. Oh, never mind! No, no, no! It, there is bot. There is an option, but... It, ah, no, there isn't. If the Scorchers hadn't died, it would have been fine, but the Scorchers did die, and... 
Even then, on top of all the assault forces coming to the north side of the map, that's just it. Mumble Clan throws in the towel. Northwest team, that is Manu 400 and Isaac, so Team Lobster, to be more precise. Team Lobster takes it. That is, and they take the tournament. That's that's the that's the tournament. That's all of it. They win 2-0. Pretty much undefeated, actually. Yeah, 400 Manu and Isaac went through the entire Swiss round undefeated. And now the entire bracket stage, too. So, not a single game lost by 400 Manu and Isaac. I just want to say that. I think that was the case. Sorry, it's kind of zoomed out a little bit. I think that's the case, because... Yep, that's exactly what happened. So, yeah. That was that. Congratulations to 400 Manu and Isaac for taking it. Good job, Kadesh, for Top Kaxigero for getting second place, for Mumble Clan getting second place. And, I mean... Team Pluck, or Pluck Power, whatever, got third. Although they did resign into third. Resigned into third place. What a Fire Pluck thing to do. I feel like I'm really, really dunking on Fire Pluck here, but it's just a known thing. But yeah. No. Very well done, 400 Manu, 12, and Isaac, just for getting through completely undefeated. That almost never happens. Or at least I don't recall it happening. Usually it kind of goes back and forth. I find oftentimes it gets, in the bracket stage, it gets two O's. But it's rare that you get complete undefeated. Like Swiss and Bracket, no losses whatsoever. So good job. And those weren't exactly, like... Well, those weren't exactly landslides. So no, they're just well played. Like, the way that the like 400 Man and Isaac, they knew what they were doing. They had it practiced down. They knew what roles to take and how to approach the game. And they did them well. Like, 400 was, you know, with the Glaives and just generally with the more raider forces getting around. Isaac was making sure to block off key sections of the map so that their opponents couldn't really get anywhere. Although this game kind of turned around because Isaac was doing a lot more raiding. And Manu with the Air Force just making sure that no one has to worry about anything. Because they're on it. And he's going to attack by air. Manu's going to make sure to stop it. So yeah. That was that. That was very well done. So congratulations you three. I mean that was last week. So congratulations in the past. Did I not say it was in Kulta? I didn't. That was in Kulta, by the way. So yeah, thanks for watching as well. I have been Dominic, casting this tournament, or okay, the recap of the tournament. And that's it. So again, thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.